So I want you to keep in mind that, you know, I don't, I don't edit anything, brother. Whatever we talk about is what goes on there. <laughs> so you might want to keep in mind every <laughs> teacher, every administrator, every student you will have ever had and will have in the future is going to hear. I, I would think in my mind they are going to hear every word of this. Sounds good. All right. Just making sure. No pressure, right? <laughs> okay. You ready to do it? Sounds like a plan. I'm fired up, brother. All right, I'm kicking it off. Let's do it, man. We are rolling. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Teach Like a Rockstar podcast number seven. Man, I have to tell you, we have some rock star teaching celebrity in the house. Tim Kenny joining us from Duval County, Duval Schools in Florida. Man, what do you hear about this guy? This guy has reached the pinnacle when it comes to awards and teaching. We're going to talk about the whole thing. Hey, before we get started, let's keep in mind we have some dates coming up. Teach the rock star dates. We have an in-service uh Coming up next week, I think, or a week after that, uh, uh, January 22nd, Arnold, Missouri, with the Foxy Six Schools. That's my favorite name of a district ever, Foxy Six. How awesome is that? And uh, and then, of course, Teach Like a Rockstar Dates in Florida, Jacksonville on the 28th of January, Fort Lauderdale the next day, Tampa on the 30th. We come back to uh, Houston in February on the 21st. Uh, 25th and we're going to stop in uh, San Antonio before that on the 21st at Lock and Terra Resort man that place is awesome hey before we get started with uh, Tim today I'm going to talk about the Taylorville schools I was just there on Monday and we did our little teach like a rock star thing and it was awesome I, and in I wanted to bring up this district because this is one of those places where where, where first of all you know we, we had to fly to uh, st. Louis to get there and then we drove to Taylorville Illinois and when we pulled into town it was um, man it's, it's like a slice of Americana you know there's like I mean these homes we drive through the, 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 the town there and these homes were built like you know I mean look like decades and centuries ago and like we would look at these houses and wonder what kind of pie they're making in there you you know, like, like it was that it was like it's like, look, I bet that's the Wilson's house and they're making like a strawberry rhubarb pie in there. I know it. I know they are. And man, it, it was just wonderful. And, and it, it, it was one of those districts. I always say this, man, when I walk into a school or a school district, I can just feel the vibe. I can tell you what kind of school it is just by just by standing there in the hallways. And, you know, most teachers can. And this is one of those places where. Man, teachers love kids, and 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 they're proud, and they're, and, and and you know they've accepted the honor and privilege of standing before those kids, and it was just an amazing day, phenomenal administrators, and um, so a huge, huge thank you to everybody in uh, Taylorville, Illinois, with the Taylorville schools. All right, let's get into this thing. Tim Kenny, how are you, brother? Excellent, excellent. I'm glad to be here with you today. Oh man, listen, this is uh, this. We have some exciting stuff coming up with with other guests, but but I think I think you top them all, man. This is this is one of those. Uh, podcast shows I've been looking forward to because I've never actually met anybody who won this award that I want to talk about. This is, this thing is ginormous. This thing, the Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. And this is one of those things where um, 85 teachers I'm, I'm, and, and, and brother, you correct me if I miss, you know, if I miss up, I'll mess up on any of this. 85 teachers in the entire country were picked for this thing. Is that true? Yeah, for for the year that I won it, absolutely. So the way the award, the award works is it alternates between elementary school teachers and high school teachers. Mm -hmm. And so they can have up to uh, 100 teachers, uh, one, uh, one elementary uh, math, one elementary science, from each state in the United States plus uh, the territory. So actually 106 teachers that, that could uh, win it. Uh, the year I won, I believe there was 85 that won it for the math and the science. That's what that man. That, that's what it says right here in the newspaper. I'm reading it. And so, and uh, and now, 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 take us through this whole thing because this isn't something that just happens. You know, like one day you wake up and all of a sudden you win this award. This is something that I mean that you know there was a start and to a finish. So, 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 how did the whole thing come to existence for you? 
So, so the award started back, I believe, in uh, 1984 um, when uh, the National Science Foundation uh, and Congress put aside this money to promote and to uh, establish these math and science. You know, and we're really, even till today, we're, we're pushing the STEM fields. And so I believe it was 1984 was the first award. Um, 1985, there was a teacher named Marita Ng in Duval County that won it. Mm-hmm. And she was a high school teacher at Sandalwood Elementary at the time. And uh, she applied and she, she won it. Uh, she also won uh, Teacher of the Year for the state of Florida uh, in, her, in her tenure. But then she later on became the mathematics supervisor for Duval County. And uh, for some reason, our, our paths crossed. And uh, she uh, took, took a liking to me. She happened to be in my classroom uh, just doing a random observation my first year of teaching. And she just said, I'm going to take you under my wing. She's like, there's something there that I, I don't know what it is. And I didn't know what it was. I was just trying to survive my first year of teaching. Right. And uh, she became my mentor. And uh, there was another guy, Zach Champagne, that was already uh, one of her mentees and uh, taught right across the hall. And so between the three of us, we just started this bond. And uh, we just, you know, we, we love just to talk about mathematics. And so uh, with her guidance and uh, Zach Champagne won the award actually in Duval County uh, back in, I believe it was 2006. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so he actually won the same award in 2006 uh, with Marita's help. And then in 2010, I was nominated for it, went through the process and uh, was selected for it as well. And you know what, man? I want to talk about the process, but before we, but before we get there, the, the, you know, there's something that you brought up that's just so critical in teaching. And I, I man, I just, I, I think it is just, um, you know, just so overlooked. And that is that, that bond that goes on with, with, with when a few teachers get together. And like you said, I don't know, man, we're just hanging out talking about math and that, you know, and, and, you know, I'm in the professional development business. I go to schools and teachers come to me and we do these big productions of strategies and, and it's anecdotal and fun. It's emotional. But what really professional development is, 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 is some teaching buddies getting together huddling it up and talking about kids and, 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 you know, how are we, how are we going to deliver the content in such a way that I can get it from my noggin and into that kid's noggin while simultaneously affecting who that kid as a person. So, so there's lots of people that talk about education as a business and, and I, I don't really care for that analogy too much, but one thing I think that we can absolutely learn from the business world is their networking ability. And I think that's one of the things that in education, unfortunately, we haven't we haven't gotten there yet. We haven't been able to do it. And and you know the old the old you know adage is that you, you go into your room your first year of teaching, you close the door. Thirty years later, you emerge and you know you get your gold watch and you move on. Right. Uh, and and for so long, I think the teaching was done on an island, and you you were just there with your group of kids, and that was it. But uh, one thing that I've always, you know, sought out is these people that were just like me that just wanted to talk about it, talk about the teaching, talk about what did I do, and you know, give yourself a pat on the back when you say, "Hey, that that was a heck of a lesson I just taught today," or "What could I have done to, you know, gotten all the kids?" You know, I, I still feel like there's something that I'm missing, or something that a few of the kids are missing. So ever since I've started, that was one of the big things that I, I've always been repono is just getting out and networking. And, and talking about about kids, about teaching, about mathematics with with fellow colleagues, it's huge. And you know, we, and we, the, you know, man, the funny thing is, I just I think I think it was on the last podcast we just talked about this, where like if you were in some business and you were a salesman, the first thing you would do is find out like who is selling the most of that stuff, and you and you'd want to go to lunch, you'd want to hang out, you'd want to like you know model what they're doing, ask them, well, hey man, let me watch what you do. You you would you would like immerse yourself in how in their you know professional life. Where teaching, you know, it's just such an it's just such an interesting phenomenon. Where you're right, man, you know that first year teacher is trying to survive, and and what I believe it is, I I believe it's that pressure that you know this is one of the only professions on the planet where the first day teacher what's expected of them is the same thing as a 30 year veteran you know and 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 what's even more pressure than that is we're talking about kids man we're talking about people's lives here 
and the I mean the and you know people want to I, I guess they just I just want to kind of hide and 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 hope hope for the best you know yeah and that, and that's unfortunate so um yeah and and like I said my 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 career path and you know what I what I've been been you know able to do has been a lot a lot large part of you know where I came from with the University of North Florida mm-hmm. I, I did my undergrad there I, I grew up in Titusville and uh, North Florida was about two hours away. I, I thought about going to UCF, uh, but uh, that was only an hour away, so I didn't know if the parents were just going to stop by unexpectedly. And <laughs> you don't, so I you don't want the pop hours in. Away, they, had to, they had to give me a call, at least a heads up in, in college to let me know that they were coming. Yeah. Uh, so I went to UNF, fell in love. It was a small small class sizes, and um, the, the professional development that went on, we were out in the schools working with teachers. I mean, that was part of their core coursework. And uh, I just happened to, you know, luck out and, and get an internship at one of these professional development schools. Mm-hmm. And so from there, that's actually where I started my first year of teaching. And so it was forced upon you there in, in that environment, which, you know, turned out to be great. And I wish it would happen more often. But, uh, you know, I, I think that it was instilled on you that you are going to go out and you're going to search out professional development and you're going to have these conversations. That's huge. You know, and, and, and I, I, you know, I speak at some universities and, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do is, um, you know, they'll bring me in when these kids are turning in like their portfolio from student teaching and their observations, like this ridiculous stuff they make them put together, you know, which I'm, I'm not mm-hmm. sure the, if it's valuable or not. But anyway, they make them turn this huge project in and then. And then we'll do the Teach a Good Rockstar thing and the professional development stuff. And what I'm learning is for a lot of these kids, the, the you know, this, this last four weeks that they've been in the classroom has been their first four weeks. And, and you know, yeah. these kids have been in college for five years, man. And so these last four weeks. And so this is the, and some of them, you know, you know, I'll tell you what's interesting is some of them found out they hate it. And I think, oh, my goodness. They've been in, they've been in college for four and a half years, and now and they've discovered they they hate children. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> We're like well, yeah, in theory, he, <laughs> this is not the profession for me. So I've just spent how much money? Right, and, right. Uh, you know, been able to you know sink this in, and then I realized this is not what I want to do with my life. Yeah, yeah. that's a shame. And, that's absolutely a shame. And and what's even worse is some of them get jobs. Yeah. And 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 now they're stuck in a class with a bunch of kids they don't like and the kids don't like them. And they don't like the content now and it just it just spirals out of control for you know at that point. So man, let's go back to it. So you are growing up in Titusville. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to stand up and uh move uh you know, budget cuts. Uh, they have the lights on a sensor, so I got it. Uh, you know if I don't move around too much, they just turn them out on me. So yeah, I do. I wonder why it got dark all of a sudden. I just had to stand up for a second, and let them know that I'm you know still around. That also, I think I think that's a good thing, man. You know, that's a that's a good uh, where like if 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 there's a class going on and all of a sudden the light goes out, hey brother, you're not teaching, man. You better. Be- <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that's a good sign for teachers. Exactly. I never thought about it like that, but. That's an excellent point. <laughs> if your light ever turns off, you better crank it up a notch, man. <laughs> All right, so you're growing up in Titusville, correct? Yes. And um, and you have uh, uh, talk to me about your family. Is uh, you have brothers and sisters? What's up with that? Yeah. So uh, I, I I joke around when I talk to people, and I you know they ask me what, why did you want to become a teacher and all that. I say I, I kind of took over the family business. Uh, both of my parents were in education uh, up over 60 years between the two of them. Uh, and it, it, I, I went to school. I did it in four years because I knew that's exactly what I wanted to be. Uh, growing up, I just knew uh, Titusville is full of, uh, you know, the Space Center was there. Yep. It's still located there, Kennedy Space Center. The shuttle program shut down, but, you know, we're, there's still there's a lot of engineering that's going on out there. But that's the environment that I grew up in that all my friends' parents were engineers or, or somehow affiliated with uh, the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, both my parents were the teachers of these kids. And uh, I just knew it from that, that, that get-go. And everyone, was, everyone tried to force me. Even my parents at some time, they were like, go be an engineer. You love the math and science. You're, you'll be great. You'll make tons of money. <laughs> you'll take um, care of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, it, was, it was interesting because they, they you know, said, you know, go explore this. But, uh, you know, I, I just always knew that I, I absolutely loved, you know, working with kids and loved the elementary setting because 
I didn't have any male elementary school teachers. Yeah. It wasn't until high school that I had my first uh, male uh, male teacher. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back into the elementary setting and be one of these first male role models for some of these kids. And it's but, true, man. It's, uh, a, it's up, like, was, man, uh, it's like the American was, hero of, uh, of, of, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of American heroes, but that one profession, it's that, it's that strong male role model. Be, and I'll tell you what, man, I mean, sociologically, there's a lot of reasons for it. One is because a lot of divorce is happening. You know, we have, still we have 51, 52% divorce rate. And most of that happens with kids in elementary school. And there's that, that father figure that's still right there because typically in those situations, you know, the, you know, the kids are with mom and dad now has to get an apartment and there's this weird thing, but there's that, that one person who stands and greets them at the door every day, high fives them, hugs them, you know, and, and shakes the hand and welcomes them into the, you know, that classroom family, man, that's such a huge part. And for me, my first man, fourth grade, Mr. Mignone. And let me tell you, this dude was like the rock star. He, he was, first of all, he was the sponsor of the safety patrol. Let me tell you, this is a, this is a it's like the SWAT team, you know, for elementary. And not only that, man, he had a Trans Am. I'll never forget. <laughs> you know, you remember that with the big Firebird on the on the hood. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it was like having, you know, you know, was, was the radio blaring when yeah, he came to the parking he did, lot? He had the T tops and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, and here, but he was like the best teacher ever, man. He was just dynamic and, and just fired up and passionate about the content and the kids. And, and you're right, man. And, and so, like, that's, that's you serving in that role. Those, those kids that are now, you know, conditioned, you know, emotionally to associate fun and learning and, and, and also, you know, discipline and, and perseverance and setting goals because of you. And that's huge. And, and absolutely. I mean, we, we've got to get them at the elementary level. By, and I hate to say this, but by the middle school and high school, they've already almost chosen the career paths or, or, or the paths in which they're going to grow up to be. Now, obviously, it's going to change and fluctuate, but I mean, the kids that they're already hanging around with, the, the type of you know, choices that they're already making, that's already rooted from their elementary years. And so if we're really going to make change, and especially in the mathematics world, if we're going to make change, we got to do it early on and get them excited about it and not that massive four-letter word that they don't want to you know, say. Uh, it, it, it absolutely cracks me up that uh, you know, we've developed a country that you know, it's okay for full-grown adults, lawyers, and all say, you know, I wasn't very good at math growing up. But yet, you know, if you were to say the same thing about literacy or reading, you know, somebody would look at you and be like, oh, you don't know how to read. Right. And, and, and so, uh, yeah, I, I've seen illiterate people fake knowing how to read. But yet I've seen lawyers stand up and say, yeah, I wasn't very good at math before. So uh, we, we've got to totally change that dynamics and change that culture. And it all starts at the elementary setting. It really does, man. And, you know, and, you know, I, one, one of the ways I really, you know, I talk about is called the, you know, the habit of student performance. And what it talks about is whatever this kid gets in its head, in his head or her head, whether it's accurate or not, doesn't even matter. That, you know, that becomes reality and they make that, you know, you know, they live up to that reputation. That's like one of those, you know, like when you go into a first grade classroom and you say, hey, everybody, who here is great at art? And man, everybody raises their hand. But you take those same kids 10 years later at the high school and say, hey, who, who here is great at art? And I'll point to the one girl and she is over yeah. there, that, that, that one right there. Well, you know, and who knows if it's true or not, but that's just, because that's just, now, but now that's in their that's head. That's their perception and yeah, that's because what their of, reality is. Yeah. And, and man, it's, it's so, man, I love when, you know, when, when people talk about it on the academic side, because it's so, man, you know, people, you kids will always live up to their reputation and Absolutely. it's our job to give them that reputation. And so yeah, it's, it's funny because you do the same thing in a kindergarten class about science. Mm-hmm. And, you know, science and math are my two specialties. You know, I absolutely love both of them. And, and you go into a, a kindergarten class, you talk about science, and everyone's a scientist. Everyone wants to explore. Everyone's all about it. And even by fifth grade or even in the beginning of middle school, you talk about science, they're like, oh, got to open up my textbook again, oh, start geez, page yeah. one, and start going go. through. So we've totally got to dispel these rumors. Yeah. But uh, I, I think I'm taking you way off track here. I think you asked about my brothers and sisters. I think originally how we got started <laughs> on this whole thing. But uh, yeah, no, I, I have uh, two older sisters and uh-huh. uh, one younger brother. Teachers? And uh, we, we are all about you know changing the social norms 
both of my older sisters went into the military, uh-huh. and both of the males in the the uh, family went to elementary education. There you so, go. Uh, <laughs> nice, yeah. And so, obviously, with with a family of teachers, and um, and mom and dad both in education, so you had a lot of support coming through the the school system. A- uh, absolutely, um, and. You know, I, I think that was that was really key uh, because when I was growing up, I actually uh, had a lot, a, a few disabilities that kind of set me back a little bit mm-hmm. um, with my hearing. And so, because uh, I, I had some serious hearing issues, uh, my speech was slower to go along. And so, I actually was pulled out for the first couple of years of school and got uh, additional support with uh, the reading and, and the speech and the language. Um, and and having that extra support at home definitely really kind of opened my world because I could have been one of those kids that fell right through the cracks and um, and, and not been able to one be diagnosed with an issue and then the second you know how do, how do they support and help out so I, I owe everything that I've got to you know the teachers I had early on and then my parents who obviously were, were my first set of teachers that I had. yeah and so what what grade was that can you think back and what grade was that where you yeah were it, it was actually before it was uh, pre pre-kindergarten and so so for pre-k kindergarten at first I was actually uh, getting additional uh, support services I had uh, tubes put in my ears mm-hmm. uh, six times and so over that period of time, uh, the, the ear canal just wasn't draining the fluid out, so infections and all that would occur. Uh, but then when people spoke, I, I would hear different sounds and, and, and different um, and, and, and repeat it back in different ways. And so the normal speech pattern was, was completely off for me. It was so bad that because I was, I guess my parents say I was very vocal, especially early on, uh, my brother started emulating and then he started having to go to additional classes because <laughs> he was listening to me speak. And, uh, and right. so it was quite interesting. He blames me for it still today. But <laughs> I, mean, I, I tell him that's the job of older brother. Exactly. Yeah. And so now I know like, so first grade for you is what, about 15 years ago. And so, <laughs> right. And so can, you know, so it was, it was a while back, can, but can you remember, was there any, did you feel any kind of emotional stigma attached of being pulled out of class or was it just part of the deal? No, I, I don't remember any, you know, any, anything along the lines of, of saying, oh, now I've got to go to, uh, you know, to this special class or whatnot. Um, I, I think it was just at that point in time and, and, and even in the cultures that we've tried to establish uh, you know, with our classrooms, when we have uh, additional teachers that support and come into the classroom with work with our inclusion students, that it's just a norm that we've just established a, a culture within that classroom that, hey, so and so needs some extra support. You know, the same reason why I see that you wear glasses, you know, if you needed glasses and we didn't give them to you, that would be the injustice, not the fact that, you know, we're, you have an advantage by having a set of glasses that I, I don't. Yeah. And so I think it all depends on the actual teacher themselves, if they can establish that kind of culture within their classroom and be able to uh, see if, uh, you know, if it's that nurturing environment for the rest of it. I I can see it going the complete opposite way as well, that, you know, oh, so-and-so has to leave now. Um, I was lucky I didn't feel any of that. Yeah. And, you know, I've seen it both ways, man. I've seen it, you know, where like I know in my classroom and, and I, we, I, I've always taught in like a co-teaching uh, situation where we have in-class support. And, you know, we would go through great, I mean, just great lengths to, to you know, make sure like for combining roles because it, you know, it would give us separate roles. We'd make sure we, we combine them, you know, where we sat everybody, make sure every just to make sure that there was none of the kids didn't develop any feelings of the, I'm different or that you're those types of thing you know on it we want everybody to feel different because they are yeah. you know everybody's unique but we didn't want that to stand out and be the one defining thing about that kid and, and i think that's what a lot of the the um ESD teachers have done so well yeah. and, and when they work with an inclusion classroom yeah they're assigned a certain set of kids but they're just an extra set of hands and that's the way that it's introduced they're an extra set of hands in the class and they're they're working with you know with the entire class um it, it always cracks me up because you know we we live in a world where we have standardized tests and you know at the end of the year and it's funny because uh, you know most of the time my inclusion kids you know really outperform a lot of the other just standard you know, 
mainstream students. And, and, and it, it's just, it's just that, that culture that, you know, we're just there to support everyone. And that the fact that, you know, we're going to celebrate everyone's success. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you a funny story is I, I was teaching biology and, um, and I had a kid in my class who had some, you know, had modifications. And one of the modifications was on his test, he would, um, if it was multiple choice, he would get two instead of four, uh, choices. And so we, you know, we always, and so I would, you know, I would stack the deck with the test. And of course, I, you know, I'd, when I'd pass him out, I'd put them all face down. And then, and so one day he comes up to me and he goes, Hey man, um, you know, my test has two choices. I know it's one of my modifications and you know, this kid's, you know, 16. And I said, yeah, he goes, well, here's the thing, man. He goes, well, as soon as we start the test, he goes, I just want you to know what I do is I'm going to start cheating off the guy next to me and you catch me. Okay. And then put me in the corner to take my test by myself. Cause I don't want to see anybody have to see that I have a different test. I said, you got it, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and so sure <laughs> enough, man, I passed the thing out. Everybody, I said, here we go. Let's do it. You know, the kid flips it over and you know, you know he's leaning. <laughs> oh, hey man, are you cheating? Yes. <laughs> well, get in the corner. <laughs> And so you would take his test over there. I thought it was such a genius move on this kid's part, you know? Yeah. It, it, but, you know, it, it's sad that, you know, he, he feels that that much social pressure that, yeah. you know, at, at this stage, I mean, you know, high school is, a, you know, a tough time, but, you know, that, that he felt that much pressure that he had to make an excuse up so that he would be over there. But what a great strategy for him to be able to yeah. do what he needed to do to, be, to feel comfortable in his own skin there. Exactly. And so, so all right, so you're going to school, and, man, you're, and you're obviously having academic success. Going to Titusville, and you've got future engineers walking around. you you got parental support. You've got, man, you, you've, 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 got, you've got the American dream when it comes to education. You have it happening, right? Absolutely. And so tell me about some of your teachers there, you know, in the elementary school. Is there, is there a particular teacher that you can think back and, and, and just somebody that, you know, I mean, listen, we, we've all had, you know, good teachers, but somebody that really stands out for you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I was lucky to have a lot of really good teachers. And, and, and I don't know if it's, you know, because I, you know, remember back to, you know, always wanted to be a teacher that I really kind of studied them in, in, in their, in their selves. Um, the, 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 the thing was always that my two older sisters were complete 4.0 kids all the way through. They were angels. They, they, they never had anything go wrong. And then, then I rolled through the, the school and everyone knows my two older sisters. They know my parents and, and, I don't think I, uh, you know, I, I was that much different, but, you know, academically, I, I was not a 4.0 student. Um, you know, I, I, I was, you know, definitely a, a BC student and, you know, I had, you know, A's along the way, but, um, <laughs> the yeah, accidental I, I, a. I think a lot of teachers, yeah, try to compare, you know, you know, they're like, ah, you know, this, the boys, when the boys come through, my brother was the same way. And so, uh, I think Miss Breeze was the one, the, one of the first ones that and she said to me, she goes, Tim, I don't, I know your sisters, I know your parents, but I'm just worried about you. And she's like, you outshine the rest of them in mathematics. And, and so I think really, that's really where I kind of had that, that drive to push for going into the math and science field. She gave you the reputation to live up to just so we could talk. Yeah. Absolutely. So Miss Breeze, is, uh, is uh, she still teaching? Uh, no, she she actually only taught for I, I think she it was less than ten years, mm -hmm. uh, and then she went on and um, she got married and moved away. I, I haven't heard anything from her um, in in the last you know well my, since my brother graduated from out there. But uh, there is a high school teacher that just recently retired. That uh, another stellar math uh, Paul Redlin that I had at, at Titusville High School, and uh, I I took algebra one from. Him, uh, college algebra, college statistics. I got to take all these courses. He offered a dual enrollment course mm -hmm. at the high school setting. And uh, because I got to for algebra one and algebra two, and then he said, you know, we're starting the dual enrollment. I want you to take the college algebra. I want you to take the college statistics. Uh, that guy was just motivation in a can. Um, he, he just, you know, every day, you never knew what it was, but he was the, the typical math teacher that had the transparencies but instead of individual transparencies, he had a little, little roll oh, that yeah. was constantly rolled through. <laughs> and, and he was just this bottle of energy. He's like, you know, writing down, you know, erasing with his hand, wiping his head. He's got the marker all over his face. But you loved him because he was just 
the absolute best teacher. And, and he wouldn't move on until you got it. You know, he's like, well, we're all going to get this. We're all together. We're, we're going to move through this and we're all going to understand this by the end. But uh, that guy, he, 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 I think he just recently retired. I heard it was funny because since I started teaching and, you know, I've been such involved with the mathematics at the state level, uh, I've seen him at conferences. And every time I tell him, I said, hey, you know, you're the reason why and it was <laughs> when I won this award. Too, yeah. I called him up. I was like, you know, you're the reason why that I was able to do X, Y and Z. So that was really cool to kind of go from, uh, you know, somebody that I really looked up to and just a great teacher, great guy to then actually being able to, even though we didn't work together, still be able to share these common experiences at a conference uh, as, as colleagues. Yeah. And, you know, man, I just I just love the visual of that guy rolling us through and wiping his head and the marker everywhere, you know, and it, that, it, that's the always, that's the thing about teaching, you know, especially, you know, I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, strategy is awesome. <laughs> And, you know, and of course, experience goes a long way, but I'm talking just about pure passion for the content and pure passion for, you know, teaching and delivering. I mean, that, I mean, if you've got that, you're, you're pretty much set, you're, you're good to go because if you got that sense of wow in the classroom, I mean, and, and, you know, and, you know, the, you know, the kids sense that. And then also it helps you too, because, you know, if the kid isn't getting it, you're so passionate, you're going to find a way. You know, and then the other kids start chiming in, and they're they're trying to help the kid get it. It's just, man, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's 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 always an adventure. You know, when they come into my classroom, they're just, you know, it's always an adventure. I don't know where we're gonna lead, where the conversation leads us to today. Um, you know, but I, I I certainly know exactly what you're talking about. Um, this this year, you know, one of my kids wasn't getting it at the beginning. I remember. I don't even remember doing it. I just remember afterwards, I, I looked down and I'm on top of her desk. I'm standing up on her desk in front of her. I'm like, come on, you got this. <laughs> and, uh, and so the next thing, you know, I'm just like, oh, I'm standing on a desk, you know. Right. So I, I get down and, you know, the kids are like, oh, Mr. Kenny was standing on a desk. I said, no, n it never happened. You know, I just, you know, played it off with the kids. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no that, that never happened. And uh, I'm sitting in a conference, a parent conference about two weeks later, and the mom goes, my daughter loves you. And I was like, well, you know, I, I you know, like your daughter too. You know, she, she's doing well. And she goes, no, you stood on her desk. And that has, <laughs> has mo totally motivated her. She's never had a teacher stand on a desk before, you know. And I was like, well, it's the, it's the little things. I think if we just get them hooked with those little things yeah. that – that we we can get them excited about the content, no matter what we're teaching. Yeah, and how and how interesting is it that you never really know what it's going to be? Like in your mind, you know, you're just in the moment and you're just doing your thing and you're passionate, you're fired up, you end up on the desk somehow, and, and then like the day and the day's over and you go home and you hang out with the family and go grocery shopping or whatever. But for that kid, man, that that's the thing. That, and you would have never known, never thought it, never even yeah. thought about it again, probably. But for that kid, man, that's the spark. And that's the seed that goes into that kid's head where, like, there's the moment, like, when that kid is is 40, standing in line at the bank and thinking back on stuff. And he's like, I'll never, I'll never forget when old, old man Chenny got up on that, man, that big, <laughs> standing on my desk. I'll never forget that. It's just crazy, man. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just a, a collection of those moments. And, 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 and you let the kids know that it's all about them. You know, you're, you're there for them no matter what. And you're going to get them to understand this content, whatever it takes. And, and, and those are the conversations that we have later. I mean, I often play uh, kind, of, kind of like uh, the role of not knowing. You know, I always, always play kind of the, the, the person, that, the kid that takes it off in the wrong direction. And the kids are all putting their hands up there. No, 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 Mr. Kenny, you're wrong. you got to do this. Oh, okay. And I, I think it's a little bit of over exaggeration, a little bit of uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I needed to, you know, go into drama or something like that. But uh, yeah, that that's the part that I think just captures the kids, keeps their attention, because it's tough. I mean, I, I think about myself trying to sit into a desk in in these little confines that we put in, you know, as educators, sit in this desk for seven hours a day, and you got to be paying attention the entire time, and don't talk to the person next to you. And, and and that's not the way that I learn. So I don't I don't think that's the best thing for the way the kids learn. So in my classroom, it's loud, it's noisy. I mean, there's going to be conversation because they've got to be talking about it. Yeah. And if they're doing that, that's why they're hearing the conversation and they're trying to explain what's going on. It brings it to a higher level order of thinking. And so I mean, I I think it's just as much fun for them at the end of the day as it is for me. And and there's no way I could ever see myself working in a cubicle. 
you know, nine to five sitting in my cubicle and then punching in and out. I, I would absolutely go crazy. You know, there's a book that um, I think I've read and maybe four or five other people read, but it's an awesome book. And I don't know if you ever heard of Robert Kiyosaki. He's the guy that wrote all the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books, and he's got this whole thing of, you know, um, uh, financial um, uh, uh, education. Anyway, the first book he ever wrote, I think, I think it's the first one, is called If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School. And... It, and it's it's just kind of you know a, a, a title to capture you, but but what the book is about is is exactly what we're talking about how we put these kids in alphabetical order, rows and aisles, sit down, be quiet, don't 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 talk. That's called cheating. You know you were, you know you know in the workplace we call it collaborating, but you, you you know you know but you don't earn that right until you graduate. And so you know sit down, be quiet, don't don't cheat, don't collaborate, don't make mistakes, just do what you're told, and. And, and you know, and what the whole book is about is this: is this, of course, now this our country. The, I mean, the world is moving into a place where we need just the opposite. You know, we need kids of creativity and resourcefulness, collaborators that can work together. And and to hear that that's going on, you know, and the kids are learning how to do that in the fifth grade and taking it with them, just amazing. You know, it's just an awesome thing to hear about. Well, I mean, that's the thing is, you know, it, it, I, I tell mine all the time. People lose their jobs because they can't play nice with the other kids in the sandbox. You know, they, they sit into, you know, some of these desks and they never have to have a conversation. They never have to have a, a, a you know, a mathematical argument with somebody else. And then when they actually do, it's the same thing with college. You know, they go off to college and then they, they can't share their, their room. They live in a the dorm. They can't, they can't get along with their roommate because they've never had to do this before. They've never had to talk through this and, and be able to reason. And, and so I think that's, that's the whole key is that we're trying to give these kids not just skills for the academics but life skills in, in general as well of how do we resolve these situations. And whether it's, you know, a science experiment that we're looking at or, you know, who's going to be the principal investigator or who's going who's to go and be the materials person. How are we going to actually talk through and resolve this and, and that we get the job done? Here's the task. Now how are we going to work through all that? And, and it really is, like you were saying, life skills that they're really learning at this point. Yeah, and you know, I, I you know, I call that the, um, well, you know, I've I've I, I've always called it the gestation period, where you know we got nine months until we got to birth this kid out the door, you know, and, and so you know, there's going to be some pain along the way. I'm you know, I'm probably going to throw up a few times. I'm going to get kicked. There's going to be some kicking involved, you know. But after nine months, we're going to birth this kid out the door into the next grade, into the next school, wherever they're going after this, and 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 what we hope for is to have those skills. Not of course, of course, he academic skills and, and of course the knowledge but also the skill on how to apply that while simultaneously affecting who this kid is at the heart level so they can go and contribute to the world as an amazing person yeah, all right so man let's get back on track god dang i love talking to you let's, so <laughs> so let's get here we go so we are we are at the high school level this dude is is rocked your world with math and you're taking dual credit classes he's got marker all over his head he's winding <laughs> out formulas and you're doing your thing and so at this point man you know you're going to be a teacher right absolutely yes there's no doubt um, no doubt yeah, I, I, I took uh, I took a couple of uh, additional courses. Uh, they they were math courses in uh, in in college when I went up to UNF uh, micro and macroeconomics um, just to see. I loved doing the math, but I, I I just knew that I did not want to sit in a cubicle all day and be somebody's accountant or somebody's uh, finance manager. I, you know, I love the math, but I want to be able to talk about it and and actually use it. And and so when I started taking the education courses, I said this is this is absolutely it. Um, you know, it's almost unheard of anymore. It seems like these days that that people can do college in four years because you go there, you try something out, and you said, "There's no, nah, th this is not for me. I need to go now. I got an another whole list of courses that I need to take to go in this career path." But luckily, I mean, I, I just knew early on, and because of these great teachers in my life. That was it. And when I t started taking a couple of them, I said, absolutely, this is it. So I got more and more. So I was able to stay on track and, and, and be able to get out uh, out of UNF in the, in the four years. And so, um, but uh, it, it's funny because I have some great friends, you know, that I went to college with that did the other, uh, the other avenue uh, that are in finance, that are accounts, that are CPAs. Uh, and I get them to talk to, try to talk to their kids about mathematics and they probably know way more mathematics than I do, but 
they cannot have a conversation with a kindergartner about why is five plus one six. And, and it cracks me up because that's the other thing in this profession. Just because you could be the guru and knowing all the content in the world, if you don't know how, and you said earlier, get it out of your brain and into the kids, you're going to fall flat on your face. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the, the, the little gift and that's the, the trick that we need to be able to work with our first-year teachers on is whatever's going on inside here, we need to be able to get out into a student. And not only that, but when they miss, you know, have a misconception about something, be able to identify it early on so they don't go down a completely different path. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's, it's like these kids get on this trajectory, and then, you know, that especially at the fundamental level, and then, you know, and they continue on that, and the, and the further they get, man, the, hard, the deeper they get, and it's harder to bring them back. But I'll tell you what's uh, – man, the other interesting thing is when you said, you know, the, these, these people probably, you know, know way more math than you, and, and, and one of the things that kind of – you know, I kind of laugh inside is when I see these – this national recruiting thing that's going on for math and science teachers. And I think, well, well, that on the surface sounds like a great thing, man. Of course, you need yeah. math and science teachers. But then I start looking at what they're doing and who they're trying to find to get in the classroom, and I think. And I think, are, are you telling me <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that PhD, you know, from MIT that had just spent, you know, teaching or not, or actually not even teaching, like on Wall Street, and now they're 40 and they're looking for a second career that this person is going to get standing on a desk or crawl around on his hands and knees or wear antlers at Christmas or whatever he's got to do, you know, to get the con. I mean, so, you know, I think, sure, we need great math and science minds, but also we, we need that personality component that I think we forget about sometimes when it comes to teaching. And like, and, and, and I know they love math and science, but has anybody asked me if they love kids? Because that's a pretty important piece of this, this formula as well. <laughs> Yeah, you, you kind of need that to be a teacher. You got, you got, it's like those the ones that never step foot into a classroom in their college college careers, and then they step into the classroom for their internship, and they realize, hey, I just can't do this. I don't like working with you know the kids or working with the people at this level. And and, and so I mean that is such a key component. Um, there's a sign in my classroom that says mathematics is about relationships. But I mean. Teaching is about relationships. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, I, I try to show the connections between concepts, but, I mean, there's the connections between student and teacher, teacher and teacher, teacher and parent, and, and you've got to be able to make these interpersonal connections, and that relationship is just as important as the content. Absolutely. Uh, and, so, and so you are you are going to school, and you are um, uh, doing your thing, and it's time to student teach. So you get out there in the classroom, and you've already been observing and doing some interning and things like that. But did you did you end up with a rock solid uh, person in your student teaching career, or did you or did you find yourself observing some classrooms with some teachers that might have uh, could, you know could have used some help along the way themselves? Yeah, again, it's just the way that the call, cards fell. I I ended up having an awesome directing teacher. Um, I, he's still a colleague of mine now, um, and, and we laugh, you know, about that, that first little bit, uh, because he, he let me do, he let me try anything. He goes, I'm not going to tell you, you can't try it. And, and, you know, I remember doing this one lesson and it just completely fell apart and we were debriefing about it later. And he's like, yeah, I kind of figured it was going to, I was like, well, why did you do that? <laughs> you you should have told me. And, uh, he's like, well, you remember it now, you know, before you would have thought, thought that I was trying to, to, to come in on you. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that he told me, uh, yeah, I used to walk around with a pencil in my pocket and, you know, just be able to help kids out. He goes, kids are really smart. They're a lot smarter than you. And I, I kind of took offense to that at first. I was like, what are you talking about? Smarter than me? They're kids. And uh, he goes, so I just watched you do this lesson and you went around and I'm thinking I knocked it out of the park. I'm like, that was a pretty good lesson. And, you know, naive, young teacher, you know, student, student teaching. And uh, he goes, I watched you do a lesson. He goes, you, you have your pencil and the kid raises their hand and says, I don't understand this problem. And you go over there and you do the problem for him and you say, OK, go ahead and do it. And you didn't make the kid think at all. And, and so you circulate and then he raises his hand again and you come over and do another problem. He goes, you did all the problems for him. He goes, that kid just worked you and you did all the work and he didn't do anything. And, and so then from that, I, I claimed, I was like, OK, I won't walk around with a pencil in my pocket anymore. I'm going to I'm going to be better. And it was a couple of days later and, and he we debriefed another lesson. He goes, so, Tim, you're doing better. 
but I actually saw you take a pencil out of a kid's hand this time and start and start working it out. <laughs> and, and, and so, you know, I think because it's Wayne Khan, um, I, I, I got I got a, off to a great start just thinking about who was doing the work in the class, you know, let the kids do the work and, and let me be the teacher that guides them on, along the way and ask those questions. And I think that's one of the things that as teachers, we, we kind of think we do the best, but it's something that's still on my professional development plan every year is questioning with kids because questioning is really tough. You know, you never know what the kid is going to say, and then you've got to be able to react in that and in a matter of seconds be able to move that conversation forward without giving them the answer. And, and, and so I think it's one of the, the things that is the challenge of the game of, of trying to think about what's that kid going to ask and how can I ask him to move, move on and move the conversation and move the learning without giving up too much information. Yeah. So I think that's one of the biggest things that Dwayne Conn uh, was able to teach me. Man, I tell you, there's just so many lessons in there. And, and it, you know, I'm thinking back to my first couple of years teaching. I, I, it seemed like every time where, you know, I, you know, I was, you know, I was in the classroom doing my thing. And it seemed like every time where I know I knocked it out of the park. And, man, I, I own this teaching thing, man. I, I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm phenomenal. There's nobody, nobody better than me. Yeah. As soon as I get that... So like I would walk down the hallway and there and then like I would pass some teacher's classroom and then I would look in and like the kids are leaning forward. The eyebrows are up, <laughs> mouth open. Everybody's engaged. I'm thinking, oh, my, I had no idea how bad I was until right now. <laughs> you know, it's like one of those things like you can't do better until you know better, you yeah, know, and, 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 and it's finding those mentors in the and, and that's the thing, man. Every teacher on campus is awesome at something. Mm-hmm. And the key is putting that thing together. Not to men, you know, now that's on my mind. I'll tell you, one of the best things I ever did was um, I was on a campus and, I, they, and I, it wasn't a professional development position, but they gave me one period a day where I could help teachers uh, with things. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put together a buffet. And I asked teachers to everybody, I said, type up the one thing that you do great. One thing that you do, you're, you're amazing at it. And some, for some people, they had a really cool way to take attendance. Other people would pass out papers. One was, it was, it was an instructional delivery thing. And so and I said, make a copy for everybody in the school. And we stacked them up on right there in the lunchroom, right where the kids would get their lunch. And I said, and, go, and you go ahead and you take one of everybody's. And we bound them together. And everybody had a book. Of, composed of of the teachers in that school of the one thing that they're amazing at man it was a hit brother it was it was great and then you know the other thing I was thinking about is I as I had a I, I was a band director for a while I've taught a lot of stuff man and and for a while I was a band director and um I taught with a, a guy who's probably taught 30 or 40 years his name's Rodney Clett and anytime he heard something great come out of a kid instrumentally where like in in your world it would be some some you know amazing uh, work that they put together mathematically in the band world is like when 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 anytime Rodney heard something you know heard a kid play something phenomenally he would always come find me and say what did you say to him like that like that you know, I said well what, what do you mean what words did you use when you taught him that how did you say it and I and I always thought it means here's a guy teaching thirty five years. And he still wants to know how. What did you say specifically to him? You know, yeah. he really wants to know how did you get him? Like, what did it take for you to get him to play that well? And you know, that man, that's that's teaching that, that right there. That sharing and that collaboration and this, you know, the stealing. You know, Harry, you know, Harry Wong yeah. calls it stealing, and yeah. um, and for sure, yeah. You know, that, but it goes back to that networking thing that we we kicked yeah. off the whole podcast with. That that I think that you know, as a teaching profession as a whole, we need to do better. I mean, we do need to do better in this area with being able to a venue to be able to get these ideas and these and this information out, and and because. Who's going to benefit from it? The kids, I and mean, that's that's the name of the game. Yeah, and hey, man, tell me about your because um, you, I'll tell you what I've learned is um, with uh, great teachers, there's always great leadership at schools. And tell me what you got going on over there, and uh, because because you've been at Mandarin Oaks for for some years now. Yeah, so so I first uh, started off uh, at West Jacksonville Elementary. Uh-huh. That's where I did my uh, internship and then or my student teaching. And then uh, was lucky enough to get into a position right there. Taught there for five years, and um, that was a it was an inner city school here in Jacksonville. It was about ninety nine percent free and reduced lunch. Uh, it, it it was just what you would imagine as an inner city school, but there was some of the, the the best teachers there, some of the best kids there, and, and we had a very dynamic leader at that point. And and she pushed me, uh, Dr. Sylvia Johnson. And she pushed me. She said, you've got to do this. You, you know, now, now you have to, 
you know, take on interns. You now you have to start sharing this craft with with you know your colleagues. And, and she got me into a lot of uh, professional development roles within the county. And, and then it came to the time when she's like, "You gotta go do your masters." And so I, I went back and did my masters. And it was about that time that uh, we ended up getting a uh, new administration. It was a point in time when uh, I, I ended up switching schools and uh, came over here to Manor Oaks and with Patty Carson, who's still the principal over here mm -hmm. uh, where I started. Again, phenomenal. But uh, uh, you know, I think between both of these uh, you know leaders that I've had, they, the the qualities are the same. They they realize that it's not the same for everybody. Well, you know, some other people need additional professional development help with, you know, going to courses. These these principals said, you need to be the one doing it. You know, now, now you need to go on, look at possibly, you know, doing your doctorate somewhere. Now you need to go on and look at possibly becoming an administrator. So I, th I think they, they internalize for each teacher and they realize that, you know, you can't just, you know, it's not just that, that one set of, you know, courses that's out there and say, go forth and, you know, pick from this list. They, they both have been administrators that have thought outside the box, you know, that, that do the book studies. And it's not just the random book list that, that you have. It could be something completely off, off education con conversation, but they would figure out a way to pull it back in. So I, I think the, the dynamic leaders that I've had throughout my career have, have definitely played a role in, in what I've done. Um, I actually stepped out of the classroom for two years uh, right after I, I got this award and um, was a district math coach uh, for Duval County. And so I traveled to t uh, 22 different schools and worked with those schools in the mathematics department. And, and it was another dynamic person. I just thought the world of Dr. Lindgren. And uh, she came and said, it, it, she, you know, we, we had been friends before and, and on a professional level, but she came into my classroom and she goes, all right, Tim, stop being greedy. And I, I said, what are you talking about? And she goes, you're helping out Mandarin Oaks. You've always, you know, helped out West Jacks. You're help, helping out the teachers here. You're helping out the students here. But I need you to take a role that's helping out more. Um, that's that's helping out these other 22 schools in the district and working with those kids and those teachers. And so uh, I told her, I was like, I, I'll give you two years. You can't do anything in a year. You don't really know if you'll like it. I said, I'll give you two years, but I, I want to come back to my classroom. And so I did it for two years and uh, uh contacted Ms. Carson again and said, hey, do you have a position open for me? Can I come back? Uh, well, I thought the, the, the whole position was absolutely great, and I learned a lot and met a lot of new teachers. Um, I, I realized that my passion is working with the kids on a daily basis. And so I, I, I'm, I'm back to being greedy, as Dr. Lingren would say. But, uh, you know, I absolutely love the 70 kids that I get to have throughout the day. And I'll tell you what, man, you know, I'll tell you what's interesting is the uh, one is – this uh, generational, uh, you know, kind of approach of teachers that 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 have been in your life and continue to be in your life. Where I mean, sure, I mean, you you know, you're a teacher and you have your seventy kids that come through your doorway every day, but then you still have your teachers. I mean, there's parents that you have, and then there's other teachers that that you still, I'm sure, peek in classrooms and try to steal something. And then yeah. even at the administrative level, you still have people pushing you and teaching you and challenging you. And you know, that's what it's all about. You know, it's all like paying it forward and. And that's what I love about those types of, you know, principals and administrators and leaders themselves is that they they never lose that teaching component of like who they are, you know, where they might not stand in front of kids every day, but they have their teachers and, and now their teachers are their students. Mm -hmm. And to be that in, you know, you know, and, and, to, and to take that role on, you know, and, you know, so many times, you know, I, I, I visit schools and, you know, there's that, I mean, sometimes I never even meet the principal. I mean, I'm doing a staff development for 200 teachers and, I, and the they're, man, they're not even there, you yeah. know, and, and, um, and, and, you know, and hear those stories about excellent leadership like that, because that's huge. That's everything. You know, I mean, for, you know, you might be like me. I mean, I can pretty much go to any school. Hey, man, just give me the kids. I'm going to close my door. You let me do my thing. You know, and yep. don't don't and just don't bother me. You know, but I mean, I and and man, I can make some magic happen. But it's so much easier when you have that that charismatic, dynamic, you know, effective leader in the hallways. You know, talking to kids, talking to teachers, and still reconnecting with that with you know with that community in the school. Huge. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's one of the one of the great things I got to see. Well, the, that two year stint and as a as a district math coach was. You know, I, I'd been very sheltered and, and just had, you know, 
been very fortunate with very great dynamic principles that, that I always just happened to have. Uh, but it was interesting getting out there and seeing the, the way of work of some of the other ones. Uh, and, and again, I think everyone has their own specialty. But, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of where I've built up my own Rolodex that, you know, as far as administration, that, that, you know, if I need something along this line, I know who to contact with this because they were dynamic with this, where, you know, these, these people were, were great with knowing the data inside and out and being able to tell you exactly where each kid was at, at any moment in time and what assessment that they uh, had, had just taken. So I, I think that's that's part of it as well. Is you know you know the, they're still teachers at heart, and they're 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 crafted towards one specific way. Yeah, and so here you so man. I've, I mean, you know, I, I, t- I tell you what strikes me is that I mean, you you have a lot of success in your classroom, and you can just tell by you kind of who you are as a person, and that whole teaching things in your DNA, and it's and and it's not necessarily what you do, but it's who you are as a person. And, and your kids are loving it. Parents are talking about you. You know, my kid loves standing on the deck. You, you, I mean, you, you've got the thing, you know, figured out. And you win this huge award. And so, like, at some point, it's like, I mean, do you ever think, like, all right, well, what's next, man? Is this it? Is this all there is? Or where do I go from here? I mean, I mean, do I, mean, do, I do a leadership thing? Or do I, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a, so here, here's the best thing. Um, yeah, right after... Um, I won the award. I was, I was interviewed by the UNF Journal as one of their alumnus, you know, for, for winning the award. And, and they had a little um, expose on me. And they, they asked the same question. They said, all right, so you've just won this award, the highest honor for any math and science teacher in the, in the nation. You know, that's it. You know, it's the presidential award. And, and so they said, well, what, what's your next challenge? Or what are you going to do next? And um, – I, I just had an incident in my class where uh, there was a, a little game. You need to check it out. It's called Kakuma, K-A-K-O-O-M-A. It's written by Greg Tang. So it's a math game. All right. And basically it's a series of problems that you have to solve, and, and it unlocks a, a larger problem, and you're timed against it. And so uh, when you go through and do it, you, you try to beat your best score. And uh, so there's a series of 10 problems, and they're all facts with under 25 and, and you try to do it and beat your time. So when I left, I, I put a challenge to my class. My kids, I, I, I just left. I said, all right, I'm going to go do this district thing for a couple of years. I'll be back. But this is a really cool app that's going to help you learn some basic facts and, and, and build up your speed. So this is my score. It, it was like 40 seconds. I said, you guys have to beat it. If you guys beat it, I'm going to get you a pizza party. That's your challenge. Well, I've been playing this for a while, and I knew that they weren't going to beat me. And uh, so, sure enough, about two weeks in, I get a I get a text. We beat your score. I was like, "What?" From the teacher that I, I left. And uh, I, so I made a point to come back and see see the class. I was like, "There's no way." They showed it to me. Sixteen seconds. I said, "There is no way you could do ten problems." I was like, "Even if you put it up on the document camera and everyone's doing it, and 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 they had me. They're like." Look, it's right here. You know right. what else can I say? It's 16 seconds. Evidence, baby. Know. There's no way. So they they strung me along for a little bit, and then they they finally fessed up. So being on you know on their iPhone, they had the app open. They opened it. They saw what problems. They took a picture of it and they paused it. So then they went through and solved all the problems. <laughs> unpaused it, hit the buttons really quick, and got in 16 seconds. So. <laughs> At first, I said, no, you guys cheated. You cheated. You can't do that. That's not the way the game's played. But, but they, they quickly informed me that I was getting them to think outside the box. There you go. And that I told them all they had to do was beat my score. I didn't tell them the, the <laughs> rules that they had to beat my score by. And so, so when I sat back, back and thought about it, I was like, yeah, you guys meet the objectives. The objective was beat my score. You guys are thinking outside the box. You're using the technology to figure out how to best me, you know, and you did it. And, and so sure enough, yeah, that's what I got for them was their pizza party. But, I mean, those are the kids that we've got that are going in, you know, and that are in middle school and they're going to high school that we're going to ask to figure out all these engineering problems, that yeah. we're going to ask to figure out the next big math problem. And, and they're able to do it. And, and they have the passion, the love for it to think outside the box and to be thinkers, not just, you know, 
well, human calculators, because that's not, that's not going to do it anybody good. But they can actually think through this problem and, and, and come up with a solution, a way to beat it. So I, I told the lady this, this story you know, that was interviewing me for the journal, and I said, that's my next challenge. That's my next thing, is because I can go into the class tomorrow, and there's going to be a whole new set of problems and challenges. And so figuring out each kid and making them successful I mean, that's, that's really my next goal right now is just the, the kids I've got this year on my roll right now is how do I make all, sure all of them are successful and love mathematics when they go next door to middle school. Yeah. You know, I think, in, you know, that, that is such a beautiful thing about teaching is, um, it, you know, it's, especially at the middle school le- level is like, you know, I, I always say that, you know, middle school, you know, middle school is the most um a, a consistent place to teach because you consistently never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and, 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 you know, and the classroom really is that place where, where once you find your thing, you really can be there forever, you know, because every year those kids come and they're different and you're going to think, man, I never would have, because, because right when you have, think you have it figured out, man, here comes Trevor, you know? <laughs> yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah, I'm so glad you didn't say little Johnny too. You right. know, you know, Johnny gets blamed for everything. Yeah. Every teacher <laughs> Poor guy. Talk about Johnny. Yeah, but so I'm so glad Trevor's <laughs> to blame now. <laughs> We've moved on from John. He quit coming to school. He was so embarrassed about all that he's done all these years. Yeah. And so let me ask you this, man. I always ask people this. Is um, for you, that if, if, if you could identify one thing that you, you feel like you're really good at, what would it be? Um, probably, probably, my, uh, probably my connections and my ability to work with people. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't care who you are. I mean, if you're 90 years old or, you know, my, my son's four, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like I can have a, a good connection with, you know, anybody on any walks of life because, you know, there's a, there's always a background story behind them and there's always something that, that I, I, I wanted to do or something I wanted to ask or some kind of connection. And, um, so I, I think my way uh, and my ability to relate to people and just and work with people, I think that's, my best thing. And I, and I think that's why I, I, I got a little bit of a handle on this teaching gig is the fact that the networking piece that I think that we're missing so much of is, is what I'm trying to do. And, and, and so I, I think that's why because of that relationships and the relationships I've been able to make with so many excellent teachers along the way it, it is why the, the path in which I've, I've ended up and been able to do some good things. Yeah. And I'll tell you one other thing you're really great at and, um, and, and I hope you don't underestimate the power of this is being like the spokesperson. So for so many phenomenal educators, because you know, I mean, let's face it, brother, you won this award and that's, and that's, it's a, you know, 85 out of what, what there's like 4 million teachers on, you know, and this is like ridiculous numbers. And, and, and the, and the fact that you're, you know, a representative, I mean, that's awesome. But, but it, you know, you and I both know, man. There's amazing educators that just do their thing. They pack it up. They take their work. You know, they 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 load up their book bags full of materials they're going to work on that night after they put everybody to bed. They go home and you know they go shopping. They're taking kids to karate class and swim lessons, and they're just doing their thing anonymously in this world. And and you know they don't get on the news. They don't. They, they're overlooked for so many things. But they're just phenomenal educators, changing the world. And the fact that you know you get to be the spokesperson for them because you've won this award man and you're just doing an amazing amazing job at it and and it's such great work and here's the next big question you ready for this one if you could what what tell now tell me what do you think there's something in your life professionally that you know that you could do a better job at what are you working on like 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 what's on like what's on your mind regularly that you're thinking you know man i really need to get committed to 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 bettering myself in that area uh, how much more time do we have? Because I think I could probably go on and fill. Fill. I mean, if you'd have about twenty-four hours of dead air, I, I think I could probably fill it. So, Man, I mean, you need one of those winders on the overhead. Exactly right. You know, uh, there there are a ton of things um, that that I, I I think that I I need to uh, to work on professionally uh, because this is ever evolving. I mean, the the, the profession it, it, you make it what it is. And, and, and so you're you're trying to look and see how can I do something that much better. Um, I, I I think probably one one of the biggest things that I could work on and, and attain in a, in a little bit shorter period of time would would probably be integrating 
the mathematics and the science more to into the literacy. Um, they're not building the school days any longer. I mean, we've got X amount of time to be able to work with students. And if we try to compartmentalize things too much, we get very uh, chops in the bits and segments uh, of these. So it's something that I need to work on is how can I infuse this with my counterparts that, that teach the literacy that it, it, it's a little bit more seamless. And so instead of, hey, I'm going to pick up and go to math and science now, or now i got to go over to literacy, you know, where they, it's just blended and they can just go throughout the school day and, and really be able to, uh, you know, not, not see that, that these two things or these subjects are, are definitely segmented. So I think that's probably the biggest thing right now in the short term that I can work on. Um, but uh, like I said, it depends how much time you have. We can, we can diagnose a lot of things. That <laughs> yeah, man. And, and um, again, man, that's, that's like the, um, that's like the quintessential, you know, awesome teacher that is aware of, of areas, man. You're still growing, still learning, still trying to improve, you know, because like, you know, like we said at the beginning, man, we're, we, you know, you know, the, you know, the bottom line of this profession isn't the dollar. You know, we're like every other profession really comes down to are we making money or saving money? That's that's what. But, but what we're talking about are, are people's lives, you know, and it's such a man. It's such an important thing to continually grow and continue to be uh, seeking, you know, even outside of education. Like, you know, you you've mentioned a few times networking. And I'm telling you, man, if there are if you go to any leadership, you know, business development or business leadership section in a bookstore. I mean, like if we had bookstores still, but like if, if, if you were to find a bookstore and you, go you there. Amazon, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, and just and just like pick any book, and 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 I've done this. I mean, I mean, I got tons of books back here, but and what and what I do is, you know, I'll buy like a book on business leadership, and what I do is like wherever it says manager or executive in your mind, every time you read that, you know, put in the word teacher. And then when you see employee, put in student. And there's just amazing outside the box stuff out there for, um, you know, just, just, just looking at education in a whole different way. Because, you know, I mean, as, as the world progresses, I mean, we, we, I mean, it's, it's always, we have to constantly find new information and new inspiration and new motivation and new ways of doing things for our kids. And you're doing it, man. It's such an awesome thing. All right, man. I got to tell you, this is the one I was looking forward to, man. I loved hanging out with you. I, I, I certainly appreciate it. I mean, this this was absolutely phenomenal. It was great to get to meet you. And, you know, definitely I, I, I look at you know, this is just being the beginning of a, a relationship. You know, I, I'm definitely going to hit you up for some ideas. I've already stolen your idea about uh, the buffet and putting the one good thing around. So uh, the teachers here at Mandarin Oaks will 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 be doing that pretty soon. I'll tell you, man. I've also done it at conferences. You know, where um, you know, where you 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 work in a large school district. You know, where especially where you have twenty two um, uh, elementary schools, maybe more by now since you've been out. But but well, those are just the ones I worked with. We have one hundred seven elementary. schools. Oh, there you go, man. County. This is a ginormous district. And so anytime <laughs> you have math day, there's you know take you know you know send that email to whoever that person is. You know that whatever you guys call them. You know here in Texas they're called like the assistant to associate or the associate. You know <laughs> this or that. You know you know whoever's in charge of that professional development day and say here's a great idea. And so what you get, I mean, with a hundred elementary schools and there's a few math and science teachers at each one, you get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of great ideas it would take you the entire summer you know to get to get through this thing and highlight and it, it is just full of gems nuggets of, of great things that people do absolutely yeah. I, 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 and i'm going to attribute harry wong i'm going to steal that idea and uh, you know add it to my repertoire <laughs> there you go well listen man i appreciate it and let's do this because i think there's i have like about three more pages of stuff i was hoping to talk about and um but man it's just, it's just so uh man it was just a great connection and and and, and refreshing to, to find somebody that's so uh connected to the kids and really believes and you know in what we do and passionate for it so so um hey give me your word that 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 uh that uh we're gonna do this again in the future sound good yeah, absolutely. I, and I, I, if I understand correctly, you're coming out to Jacksonville pretty soon, huh? Man, we're going to do this thing in Jacksonville. We have it coming up. So uh, come on by my classroom. I'll introduce you to my kids. Oh, I would love it, man. I would love it.
Absolutely. Get back in touch and see some kids. I'll tell you, yeah. man, that, you know, you know, it's one of my favorite things. You know, I was just, I went back, um, uh, my buddy's classroom a few weeks ago and you know, that, that, that I got to tell you, that's the hardest thing. And you know, man, you were out for two years. Yeah. It's the hardest thing of, uh, you know, man, not being involved in those kids' lives. I mean, I, you know, here's the thing, man. I miss the teaching part. I miss the camaraderie of the school. I miss, um, you know, I'm, I, I miss everything about, it. man. I, I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm not, I don't agree with standardized testing, a lot of it, but I do love the build up to it and, and get excited about it. And, you know, I kind of would treat it differently and we would get fired up about let's, let's do this, you know? And, um, I miss that. I miss it. I, and, but the thing I miss is being a part of that kid's life, you know, and, and hearing the score from the little league game. And, you know, and I miss in, 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 in what he got for his birthday and what his family did over the weekend. You know, I, I miss, I miss all of that. That's a hard thing to leave. Yeah, it, it is tough. And those connections, I, I've taken such abuse. I'm a huge Notre Dame fan and I've taken such abuse from my, my students the last couple of days over, over the shellacking that we got in uh, the PCS championship. But, uh, but it's great because we have that. That relationship that the kids know they can come in and give me a little harassment every, every morning about it. Yeah, man. I tell listen, dude. I'm, I'm I'm glad you brought that up real quick. You know, I, I'll tell you what I love about that coach is, you know what it is, man. That guy's a teacher. Everywhere yeah. they go, you know, I mean, like if you talk to players and you talk to his assistants and they ask, yeah, great, you're sure he's a great leader, he's a great motivator, he's insanely task oriented and organized. But you know what? They all say he's the best teacher I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, you know, fundamentals of football to how you live your life off the field, how you how you get yourself organized and in your day. And and and, you know, and if you look at that team uh, and 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 you line them up, man, it wasn't just this last game, but pretty much more than half their games they played. They were outsized, outmatched, yeah. out speed, out strength. <laughs> and but but they find a way to win because they have a phenomenal teacher, you know, in charge of that team. And he told him, he's like, you know, I, I expect you to win. And again, it's that mindset that we, we set we self, set ourselves up for this self-fulfilling pro- prophecy. You know, he said, I expect you to win. I, I This is what we've trained for. And that's what they did. They, they, they won those games during the season. So. I'll tell you, man, I'll tell you, but, but I would get so scared. I would get like intimidated sitting on my couch. Did you ever, ever watch him scream at one of his assistant coaches on TV? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I would think, oh my God, I would just start crying right there and quit, drop my yeah. clipboard, cry, yeah. walk off. Yeah, usually when I get yelled at, it's usually in my house by my wife and no one's watching, but not on national TV in front of everybody else. So. Right. All right, man, I'm going to hit it. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate your time, man. And thank you, not not just uh, for being here today, but for all you do for those kids, you know, and being that American hero and the one they're, they're going to have in their mind for decades and decades as the person. You know, I'll tell you, when I'll tell you, listen, man, they are, they're, they're going to think, they're going to think, you know what it was? It was when my cheeks hit the seat in Mr. Kenny's class, <laughs> everything changed. And, it, man, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing to see what you're doing. So, man, I appreciate you. Thank you again. Definitely. We'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. Have a great rest of the school year. We'll see you. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.